Hello all, just another video today. Uh, give you a rundown of what we're doing right now. We've been mucking out this entire ditch. The dozers and the dump trucks have been bringing material in behind me and putting it in in lifts, as you can kind of see here. If the if the machine is loud and you end up not being able to hear me, I apologize, and I guess you probably wouldn't see this video anyway, because why would I post it if you didn't hear me? But I digress. Uh, but right now you can see where we were, I have the engine idled down so you can hear me talk a little better. Down there, I uh, you can see the muck and all the bullshit and the mud and the water still over there. And I've basically just been staying ahead of the dozer and the dump trucks and giving them in here. It's not perfectly dry, but it's hard enough that I can, that I can put the machine bucket down flat, push, lift myself up and that's what you want if you can do that the material's good enough to be to be put on i know you can kind of see there's a little bit of mud you know the half inch layer or so whatever you can kind of see it there you know it's not perfectly dry but you know for the grand scheme of things it will do so you can zoom this in a little further make this a little better yeah that looks good let's give that a shot so what I'm doing right now is getting close to this edge on my side. And I'm just I'm not worried about making it look perfect and pretty. I'm just trying to scrape away any last bit of, of thick mud. Just working my way down. There's just some kind of that, that thick goops of mud, three, four inches thick on the side over there. I want to get all that out. Okay, at least much of it as possible. And, uh, I'll, I'll just keep it like that so I can see it. And then I'm just gonna bring it up. Scoop it in the bucket. So we got the dump truck backing up right now to get loaded. So we're gonna go ahead and track. The AC is busted on my machine right now, so I have the windows and doors open and stuff. The bad thing about that is. Uh, this backup alarm is incredibly loud on this dump truck. So when he's backing up to me, I always make sure that I'm facing him so the windshield blocks the noise so it's not piercing the ear. So uh, I know I don't have a full bucket, but it's not worth it to turn to the right with my door open and hear that loud piercing alarm. That's about good. What you want to do on these, on these off-road dump trucks don't have a tailgate. When you're dealing, especially when you're dealing with this muck and this mud, you want to get your hard material, your, 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 the, the firmer material, like this stuff, is not as mucky and, and runny as some of the other stuff. You want to get that and put that at the end of the tailgate to make a dam so that you can put the mud and the slop and the water and the muck and the goop and the soup. You can put that closer to the front so this acts as a dam so the rest of it doesn't fall out. So we've done just that. And they've been fussing at me about uh, loading them too much. Even though it's not too much, they just don't want any of this muck to fall out on some of the access roads. Even though the access roads are gonna be skimmed and refinished by a dozer anyway, but I, I digress. Uh, so we're just gonna very lightly drop it in. I don't want this slop splashing on me. Since my, my top window and my door's open, so we're just gonna take it nice and easy. The stick function, the, the, as in the left joystick pulling or pushing, is and the scoop function, the right joystick, left and right, determines your fill factor. That's, that's, that's the big part of filling any bucket. You're, you're down, and then I'm pulling with the stick, and then I get enough and I scoop. Nice full of a heaping bucket load. When you have good material, you can essentially get double buckets load him in and you want to be smooth on the dump truck. I'm going to honk at him, let him know he's good. That's plenty enough. I could probably put a little more, but it's not worth hearing him bitch about it, potentially falling in the room. So now we're back over here to business as usual. I got a little bit of cleanup to do. Stay ahead of everything. I'm going to orientate myself a little closer to the edge so I can reach over. Not too close. We got a solid 18 inches to the edge but this hole is not very deep maybe four feet or so maybe five feet uh, in some areas that 
bottom elevation of the of, of the ditch is going to be different based upon how much muck there is. In some areas, especially in the beginning, I was only having to go down three feet because it would get hard. But in some other areas, I guess the water settled more or whatever. I don't know how long this ditch has been here, but the the water settled in certain certain places different, and it made it muckier, deeper. So you got to get that out so you can put better material on top because on all of the stuff over here is going to be railroads and other things uh and you can't you just can't have a bad foundation for railroads that's why we got to do this thing right so anyway back to business by the way i'm on a komatsu uh 290 with about 8,000 hours on it 8200 hours on it actually i think pretty close to that anyway it's a lot of hours but she still runs like a champ love this machine i'm gonna go ahead and dump that even that's not a full bucket uh, because I'm gonna have to reach over here and have my bucket upside down anyway. I'm just mainly looking for big clumps, like I said before, big four or five inch thick, you know, pieces of mud on the sides. You know, the bottom you can see it's it's fairly good. There's a couple spots over there. It looks like dry material right here under my bucket, but that could be wet material covered in dry material. So we're gonna scrape and look at that. It looks like all mud underneath. So don't get that it's going to come up and seep up to the surface depending on how far down it is below or it's going to create a low spot in a, in a pot bowl and that's not good either we're going to pass right here looks like a looks like a vert ramp tony hawk pro skater construction condition some good material with you when you're taking this wet material it's better to take some good material than try and leave all the good material and leave bad material wet material behind does that make sense did i explain that well enough it's better to take off a little more and leave no wet mud behind than it is to uh, leave a good bit of bad material wet material it's always better to just By eight feet or so a couple feet deep you know give or take they turned the pump off for whatever reason i guess it got clogged up with mud or that or it ran out of gas i, I, don't, I don't know what, what exactly happened to it but we're getting to the point now we're getting to the end of this ditch and i need that water out of here so i'm going to show you how to handle that this is what i've been doing on more when you have time you can do this when you don't have time you just got to get a pump in there or freaking something else out what you do is I know that the suction hoses are off to the left, I just moved them, so I'm not worried about hitting them if I dig right here. I'm gonna pull some of this muck. Move up a little more. I'm gonna put my bucket like this. I'm gonna dig in there. Try and fill my bucket up with only water. Some mud's gonna get in there, it's not that big of a deal. It's filling up nice and easy. Almost done. Good enough. We're gonna take this water. I'm gonna take it over here first. I'm gonna try not to get it on that pump. And what you do is, it's a nice sunny day out here. And again, like I said, this is if you have time. Just sprinkle some water there. You might ask, why'd you do that? Well, that water is gonna spread out only so far. Eventually, it's the, the dry, dusty, dirt road is going to soak that up, and the sun's going to dry it out. Just a minute ago, uh, I put some, because you can't see my finger, kind of right here where the shadow of my bucket is. I put some water there. It's already dried up. Uh, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be dry, and you won't even notice the dirt was there after a while. And I'm 
just gonna come by, especially on these dry spots, and we're just gonna sprinkle water. It's much like if you've ever poured water on hot asphalt, like a bottle of water, maybe emptying out hot water, you know, from, from that you left over in your vehicle. If you pour this water and sprinkle it like this over this dry dirt, in no time flat, it's gonna be dried up. I'm not saying get a whole full bucket of water and just splash it on the road in one spot because uh, that water may, in, in my case, it may run into my ditch or it may oversaturate the road. Uh, it may oversaturate things and then you kind of got a problem. But I know this road is sturdy, it's good, it's got a solid uh, ballast foundation in it, so this little bit of water is not going to hurt it. And on top of that, I, I know the sun's going to be out for a good while, so I'm not worried about that either. I know it's going to dry up. We don't have rain coming. Uh, and you know, I think it's going to be a good stopping point uh, on this one. I hope I was able to show anybody something. And I uh, hope you guys are having a blessed day. And, uh, and I think that's going to do.